Now, what exactly does it mean to wait on God? As we've all said this, and I've been guilty myself. Well, you know, this is what I prayed to God for. This is what I asked him for. And I'm just waiting for him to come through. Waiting can be difficult. I sometimes say, make me work, but please don't make me wait. But waiting as described in the Bible is a different process than what we think. The Hebrew word for wait is quava, which means the plait, like the intertwining of a hair or rope. Waiting on the Lord is not a passive thing. It means to intertwine our lives with him. Every circumstance, every decision, every facet of our life becomes wrapped so tightly together with the Lord that we are one. So many of you, uh, like myself, are in that waiting room. You're in your waiting season. Whatever it, whatever it is that you've been uh, asking, right, pleading God for. Uh, maybe you're in uh, the situation like me, desiring marriage, uh, desiring a relationship. You're, you're waiting for God to come through. You're waiting for God to deliver that promise. So while we're in that waiting room, as Tony Evans said, we should not be waiting passively for God to deliver this promise. We should not be waiting passively, waiting for God to call our number as if we're sitting in a DMV. We, we, we got our number and we see that person being called. We see the next person being called. We see that person being called and we're like, God, why haven't you called me? How come you haven't said my number yet? So why we're in this season of waiting, we should be like Tony Evans said, intertwined with the Lord, kind of like my braids intertwined tightly we should be tight with the lord right like we all got that best friend or that cousin that's my dog that's my homie we 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 close like this we we close we intertwine we we we, we close to the hip that's my dog that's how it should be with jesus in our season of waiting our focus and there's nothing wrong with desiring a relationship or desiring marriage but our focus our energy shouldn't be solely on that because now we're making marriage we're making relationship we're making that an idol and the problem is too we're so we, we get so nosy we get busy we get distracted right we see other people getting called we see other people getting in relationships you see other people getting engaged you see other people getting married and their numbers getting called and we asking God, how haven't you called me? But God is like, they've been keeping busy. You don't know how long they've been waiting. You don't know how long they've been in this room. You just got in this room and you think you've been here long enough and you haven't you haven't done any work. You haven't kept yourself busy. They've been doing work. So a lot of times we find ourselves getting distracted and seeing what other people got going on and we feel like we're missing out. We feel like time is going by too slow and time is not moving quick enough so we can get out of the room and get what God has for us. So I would like to equate this to when I used to work fast food, right? When I was working fast food, it would just be days to where I just, and those who work fast food know, you just don't want to come in and work on Sundays. You just don't. You'd rather quit, but bills got to be paid, right? But it's like, man, every five to 10 minutes looking at the clock, Dang, bro, like, it's moving too slow. I'm ready to go home, right? <laughs> it, because your mind is so focused on going home, your mind is so focused on getting off that clock that you're not keeping yourself busy. But when lunch rush comes, when you work fast food and lunch rush hit, I had no time. I had no opportunity to even focus on looking at what time it was because I was busy trying to make four or five Whoppers at a time along with a... Uh, double cheeseburgers so i was so busy intertwined and wrapped up in doing my job and making these burgers and sending them out to the drive through on time I, I i had no i wasn't thinking about the clock i wasn't thinking about trying to get home i was thinking about not getting yelled at and getting in trouble so i had to focus on my work and next thing you know as time went by now i got a couple hours left until i clock out three or four hours next thing you know i'm off the clock and i'm done so I want to translate that over into our waiting season. My waiting season, your waiting season, is that if you're solely focused on the relationship and when is God going to take me out of this and when is God going to get me out of the waiting room and when am I going to be in my relationship, when I'm going to get my husband and my wife and my kingdom marriage and I'm going to get that, that love that I always, that, 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 uh, that marriage love, that kingdom love, right? What, when am I going to get that? Because I feel like time is going by too slow. But when we shift our focus on Jesus 
and put our energy towards him and all that he wants to do in our lives and we keep ourselves busy and waste in the midst of our waiting season that's when time speeds up that's when time goes by next thing you know boom your person has been presented in front of you might are dating engaged on your way to get married you're like man i didn't expect god to bless me this quick i feel like i i just caught my stride i feel like you know i've really been focusing on jesus and i've really been enjoying myself and my singleness not because i'm single and i can just talk to whoever i want to but i've been enjoying my singleness because i've been sitting in the presence of jesus to where it was like i wasn't even thinking about marriage i wasn't thinking about a relationship because the only thing that was on my mind at the time was jesus so now the next question is what do i do or what can i do to keep myself busy while i'm in this wedding room first off you want to be connected into a community as a christian it's important it's vital to be connected to be plugged into some type of church because being single you're going to get temptation of of uh, maybe a forn fornication right maybe watching pornography you're going to struggle with some things maybe you know you don't feel loved you're not worthy of love you're not worthy of marriage there's nobody out there that's for you these thoughts are going to attack you so it's good to be plugged in into a church into a community that are going to pray for you and uplift you and encourage you when you have these struggles and when you have these battles also even outside of church you know, fellowship with other believers, you know, you and a couple of brothers and sisters go bowling or maybe go to a theme park or maybe just, you know, really connect, even connect outside of church, play pool, do arcade, you know, just just building, uh, building that relationship with other believers. It, it'll keep your mind busy from always thinking about I'm single, right? Because if you're just sitting in the house, oh, I'm single, I'm alone, I'm by myself. But if you're around other believers and y'all are having fun, it's a reminder that I'm not alone. It's a reminder that I'm not by myself. And of course, um, building yourself up in your faith, getting closer to Jesus through prayer, you know, through reading, through studying, through worshiping God, you know, keeping your focus, again, keeping your focus and your life intertwined within Jesus. Because what you don't want to do is be underdeveloped and not ready for the relationship that you've been asking God for in your waiting season and your single season whatever you're waiting for now is the time to develop yourself and prepare yourself for what God is promising because imagine you come out of that waiting room and God blesses you with what you've been praying for but yet you're not ready for it because you didn't take that time of waiting to use that to develop Use this time right now to develop, to grow, to evolve, because what will happen is you'll end up squandering what God gave you because you were never prepared in the first place to receive it. So don't feel alone. I'm right along there with y'all, man. I desire a relationship. I desire to be married again one day. But at, at this moment, even just me like dating, that's just not where it's at right now. And that's okay. It's okay. Like, let's, let's, I'm encouraging y'all, like, let's do this thing together. We're going to walk this thing out together as brothers and sisters, and we're going to get through this waiting season together. I'm going to encourage y'all. Y'all go and encourage me, and we both will make it to the other side. Because what God promises, he's going to give to us. You can take that to the bank. And shout out to my dude, Sean, a, a grape juice, man. He said something in the video that really spoke to me, right? He said, when it comes down to like love, you know, relationships and marriage, we're we're the ones who are in a rush. God isn't in a rush. God knows exactly what he's doing. But sometimes we don't trust God in the midst of our waiting. Right. So we think that love is slipping away. We think that marriage is slipping away. We think that 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 kingdom, that kingdom marriage that we've been, we think is slipping away from our hands. We think that it's becoming out of our reach because we feel like the longer we're in this room, the more and more that is slipping. But you know what God is saying to me and you, to all of us? I'm not in a rush. You're exactly where you need to be at this moment and at this season.